think she's avoiding Barry right now? It seems like this season, this is the least close they've been as, uh, as working coworkers and so on. I think I, Grant and I were just talking about this a couple weeks ago. Like, Grant has not been as present in Star Labs as he has been, Barry has not been as present in Star Labs as he has been in past episodes. I think that's what's great about the show is that they've really allowed um, Caitlin and Cisco in particular and you know, whatever Wells is in the picture to keep moving everything forward at Star Labs. Barry's a little bit more out in the street, that sort of thing. But they used to go out for like, you know, coffee, go out I social. am always <laughs> pulling for more. I'm like, let's get Caitlin outside of Star Labs. Like, whatever that looks like. Um, there is, there's, I was going to say there's some social outings. There's a social outing in episode six, but um, Barry doesn't go. So, you know. It's, it, that's what's great about an ensemble, is not everybody has to be working all the time. There are different episodes that are bigger for different characters. I'm really happy because I've gotten to work with Keenan. I just said this to Keenan this morning. Like, I'm so glad we're having, we're getting some, getting to work together some more. Speaking of the ensemble cast, uh, we, we went through a similar kind of thing with Cisco last season where he was afraid to show the team's powers and, and that kind of thing. What is motivating Caitlin to make this similar choice? What do you mean? Uh, she is, she's been keeping her, her choice to hide it. Yes. Well, because I think she doesn't understand it. I think you know. I think that conversation would be a little bit difficult. Like, hey guys, I don't have the answers, but here you go. Especially for Caitlin as a scientist and someone who is focused on always having the answers. I think she wants to get get this figured out for herself before she comes to the team with you know her request for physical changes. Uh, but she's figuring that out. You know. It's, it, as maybe you remember from season one with Barry, it took him a minute to figure out his powers. I'm like, oh, I kept passing out because I don't eat enough. Things like that, you know. She's going to have to figure out different ways to cope with these changes. At the end of episode five, which we got, some of us got to see last night, oh. uh, your uh, Caitlin's mm -hmm. mother um, gave her a big warning that she touched the computer screen, she got mad, um, and her powers manifested again. How much are you going to see the mother-daughter relationship after that episode? It seems like her mom is starting to care more and open up more. Um, I would like to see more, always more. I think we've gotten to see a lot of the Allen family history. We've seen a little bit of the Ramon family. And I think it's, I would love to see more of, you know, Dr. Tannhauser and Caitlin's relationship. Um, I, her premonition is definitely um, scary. Is Caitlin mad at Barry for changing reality so something happens so that Killer Frost might come to be? I thought about that and I asked myself that question and the way I sort of see it is that, you know, this version of Caitlin Snow, this is her life. She doesn't remember Flashpoint and she doesn't remember that other timeline. So she doesn't know anything else. So I don't really think she's mad at Barry. I think it's fascinating and, you know, also from a scientific perspective, I think it's interesting to her, but I don't think she's mad at him about it because this is all she knows. 